Hello, I'm Nyx, and subject for today's video is solving the remove element problem on the Leet Code website. As always, I'm going to solve this problem in the C++ language and give you a detailed explanation of the entire process, through planning of the algorithm, to the actual code, to analysis of said code, where we go over time and space complexity analysis, as well as looking at Leet Code rankings. If that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. Welcome back. Let's get right into it, shall we? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, given an array nums and a value val, we need to remove all instances of this value in place, which means we cannot allocate any extra space for another array, can't make any other new container because that requires lots of additional memory that's dependent on the array size that is originally given to us, so that's a no-no, that wouldn't be uh, constant memory usage, so we're shooting for a big O of 1, constant space complexity. Uh, the order of elements can be changed, and it doesn't matter what we leave beyond the new length. And then we go f with some clarification as to what it means to pass by reference versus passing by value. Uh, passing by reference means you don't do a copy, and if you change anything in the original, it changes outside of the function that calls it as well. Whereas passing by value, you do make a copy, so any alterations you uh, do within the function that called it doesn't get passed to the original. And examples to uh, further clarify here, given an array, we apparently don't like the value 3 and want to get rid of it. Our output is 2 because the length of the modified array without containing those 3s is now down to 2. And so that is what we should return in terms of our output, and then it'll look at nums and see if those two positions are actually contain what they should, in this case the values here instead of the threes. And this is actually a little bit misleading in terms of the array because it doesn't actually care what condition the array is after it sees the first two values of that length being 2. So it could have the values that we want to quote unquote delete moved over to the end. It could have officially deleted them, but leave leftover places in the array. It doesn't matter what's back there. All right, so let's see some constraints here. We could potentially be given an empty array, but the size of the array isn't that long. Uh, numzi 0 to 50, and the value 0 to 100. Okay, next up is planning. Now, because of this additional constraint here, where we have to do it in place, we want to shoot for this constant memory, an answer that, say, creates an additional array, goes through the original, and every time it sees the value that we want to delete, it simply doesn't copy it over to the new array. It just copies over all the other values into the new array, and then presto, the value is removed. That would be fairly easy to do, but that would have big O of n time complexity because of that additional array. So because that doesn't fulfill the specific constraint that we're given, it's not going to be a valid answer, and I'm not going to bother doing any sort of code for it. But how do we do this in place? Let's plan this out, and let's bring up a handy-dandy whiteboard and go through a new example to figure out how we're going to do this. So we're given an array here. Let's walk through the array and ask ourselves some questions. So first thing we see is a zero. Is that, say, the seven? Let's say we hate seven for some reason, and that's the value that we want to remove. Is zero seven? Nah. So it gets to say it's unchanged, and we move on to the next position. We ask, is that a zero? No, two is not seven. So we move on to the next, and here we see a 7. So we need to get rid of that. Now, we could do 
deletions and doing additional shiftings, but that would result in additional for loops, nestings, higher time complexity. Let's see, if I just keep that in mind, and I'm iterating forward into the array anyway, I see the 6 in the next position after that 7. So if I just temporarily skip over this first 7, keep in mind that I've seen it, go to the next one in line and say, is that a 7? No, it's a 6. Okay, well, I'm keeping in mind that I've already seen one 7, so I'm just going to shift that over to where that 7 was. Now that 7 becomes a 6. Now the position I'm looking at is still at the original 6. So let's move on here, continuing to see. And I've seen another 7. So let's keep that in mind that I've seen two 7s now. And move on and look what's beyond that 7. Well, that's a 4. The 4 can stay, but now where is it going to go? Well, because I've seen this first 7 and I've seen this second 7, it's going to shift over to this position where the original 6 was, because that 6 has already been moved over one space. So now this 4 needs to be moved over two spaces in order to get to into its appropriate position. Same story with the 9 here. It's going to shift over two places and overwrite that 7. So my array is going to now look like this. Because I've seen two sevens, and this original array had a size of seven, seven minus two sevens I've seen, I'm only gonna care about these five spaces here. And those spaces should contain all of the relevant values that should still remain in the array. And it does. 0, 2, 6, 4, and 9. And additionally, these extra 4s and 9s that stick around at the end don't matter because as long as the appropriate length is being output by the f algorithm and the appropriate values that should be there remain there in the modified array, it doesn't matter what these are. The computer's never going to look at them, it's never going to care about them. So going over this example here, we have learned a couple of things. We need to go through the array, unsurprisingly, so we're going to need some sort of loop. We need to keep track of the number of values that we want to get rid of is. So we're going to have to have some sort of integer variable there that keeps track of the count. And when we were altering these places here of the numbers that are still going to remain in the array, the amount of places they ended up shifting to get to their new position to overwrite the values that we want to get rid of was equal to the count of the values to be removed. See here this six? We at that time saw only one seven, so it shifted over one place. But when we saw four and nine, by that time in the array, we've seen two sevens, so they needed to shift over two places. So the shift is going to equal the count. And finally, the relevant output that our function is going to do is going to be equal to the original size of the array minus the count of the values to be removed. So with all of that in mind, let's move on to the code. First up, the only variable we need is an integer to keep track of the number of times we see this value crop up. And we set that initially to zero. Next up is a typical for loop. Index starting at zero, the beginning of the array. We go until we reach the end of the array. We increment by one every single time the loop resets. And we now have an if statement within the loop. The condition that we're looking at initially is if the value at the position we're currently looking at is equal to that value that we want to remove, we want to register that in the count. So it increments up by one. Next up is the else branch, and this is going to be what shifts the values. The way to do that, remember, is to make sure you're doing it in a way that depends on the value counted. So we're going to set the value at its original position minus the number of uh, values that we've seen so far to what it is originally. Finally, 
outside of the for loop here. We're going to return that modified length of the array where we just have num's size, the size of the original array, and we subtract the number of times we've seen the value to remove. And that should alter correctly the array and give us the correct integer output in terms of the length of this new array. Now looking over this code, I want to make sure it's good for some edge cases. These constraints here indicate that we could potentially be given an empty array. So does that work for that edge case? Well, yeah. In that case, num size is going to be equal to zero. I is already set to zero and zero is not less than zero. So it never goes into the for loop and it simply returns num size minus val count, which in this case is zero. So zero minus zero is zero and this should work. So empty arrays are taken care of with this code. And now we can see some interesting things going on with this other example here where we're given an, an array with nothing but the values that we need to remove. Uh, for loop is going to iterate, val count is going to go up to three, the num size is also three, so technically we never actually get to this branch. All we do is count the number of things that we're supposed to remove subtract that from the array size, get zero. And although we technically don't actually alter this array, considering the specifications of this problem, it's actually good. <laughs> because three minus three, we get an array of zero. And now you ask the question of, well, do I care what's beyond zero? This could be an array of size 100 full of threes, which we want to remove. It could have just one three and everything and anything in between. And yet we aren't going to care because the value of the array is supposed to be zero and everything beyond zero. In this case, everything, anything, and even in the case of the empty array, nothing. It'll all work. Huh, that's kind of... <laughs> interesting even though we haven't technically done anything to the array. I just find that amusing but in within the constraints of what this problem is that's technically that that should work. Although that's getting in a little bit I feel like I'm navel gazing into the universe I need to get a rid pill and go back to reality. <laughs> anyway let's uh, move on from that and uh, this code should work should be able to handle any of the edge cases, so let's see if that's true. Pending, finished, this answers that. So submit, full shebang, pending, judging, and accepted. Excellent. All right, now before we hit the button here, let's go over the time and space complexity. So the only variable that we created within the algorithm is the val count, simple constant variable. We don't have any array, any other additional container that depends on the size of the original array. So this is indeed fulfilling the requirement that we do this in place with a space complexity of big O of one, constant amount of space. So we fulfilled that requirement. Looking at the time complexity, we have this for loop here. It's unnested, just one of them. It goes through the entire original array size. So this is going to mean that the big O for time complexity is going to be on the order of linear time. It's going to depend on the size of the original array, which I can say equals N. So it's going to be a big O of N time complexity with a big O of one base complexity. Let's see what the rankings say. And then, okay, very tight here. Uh, beats 100% of CPP submissions. Okay. Um, 
And yet, I don't see anything here. Where's my you are here sign here? I don't know where I am. Uh, it's a very small range. I don't know if that means that I'm outside of this range or it didn't register or it's like server weirdness. Tell you what, let's do some, <laughs> let's do an experiment. So I'm 100% here and I'm like undefined in terms of its memory. Let's go back to the problem and let's resubmit and let's see if that changes. So I'm not gonna change anything about this. I'm just gonna resubmit it, get ex it accepted again, and see if it changes. <laughs> okay, it did. See, this is why I tell you to take these rankings with a grain of salt. The analysis of time complexity and space complexity is uh, definitely highly useful for gauging where your algorithm is performance wise. But it's always fun to see these rankings. So apparently, even, even though I didn't change anything, and I'm like, I'm gonna have to make sure I don't edit this section to prove there's no funny business here. Uh, this, I was here, I didn't change anything, but now I'm here. So does that mean I show up? No, I don't show up. I wonder if I can get it to show up. Let's do it again. If it doesn't change anything, I'll you know edit this part out. But again, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to resubmit. I'm going to get accepted. And I've popped back up here. Hey! I've actually shown up here! Cool! Ah, uh, you are here. Your memory used to be 99.5%. Isn't that nice? Okay. That was a bit of an experiment to see what happens with lead code rankings when you don't change anything and you resubmit three times. That was the remove element problem on the lead code website. Very good website for practicing, even though it has some amusing things in its rankings. But anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope it was informative in some way for you. And as always, I will wish you happy coding and to have a nice day.